Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner. First off, I just want to say I'm sorry for the lack of content. Like, I've been putting out a video once every couple of days, which is still what I wanted to do, but it hasn't been nowhere as frequent as I would do before, and well, you can just blame Pokemon X for that one. And the wonderful thing known as competitive battling, or rather just trying to get into that, as I've spent like the last five days trying to IV breed one perfect Pokemon. But, I am starting to get the hang of the whole process, so it'll be hopefully faster to actually build a team and get from there. I've been doing a lot of GTS stuff too, and I finally managed to pick up some decent Pokemon off of that. Random trades sometimes give you good results, like two Protein Frokies. I was not expecting them, but they're not unwelcome. That being said though, in today's video, as you can tell by this mat, I'm going to be doing a Card by Vanguard video, and it's going to be a deck profile on Narukami, but not Vermilion.deck. Instead, I'm going to be giving you guys Eradicators. Now that BT11 is out, I can actually build a deck based on these guys. It's by no means a great deck. It's probably Tier 2, maybe Tier 1.5, just because it's an inherently good deck. It's is obviously not as powerful as what we will be getting pretty soon, i.e. Dracon and Descendant, but I decided, well, now our comic cards are out, and I've always just wanted to build an Eradicator deck for the sake of them being our commies, so I figure, why the hell not? And it's been actually testing pretty decently, I mean, I played against stuff on the tier of, say, Grand Blue, I played against stuff on tier like Neo Nectar, but like I'm going to lose to that deck. But I even had a game against Dauntless Dote, and I was actually able to perform quite well against them. So this is definitely something that could be considered a budget version of Eradicators once we get more uh, Eradicator named cards. There's obviously some card choices in here I'm running because they've all I, they're all I really can run, but once more cards come out, this build will be better, and, and we're just going to get right into it. So first up, for my starter, it's still Spark Kid Dragoon. This is the best Narukami starter currently available. In BT10, though, we will be getting something called Ambush Eradicator Linshu, but for now, we'll just go with this guy and his potential ability to hit a grade 3 by putting it into the soul. Speaking of grade 3s, first up, 3, no, 4 copies of Eradicator Bowing Sword Dragon. He works very nicely with the other grade 3 in this deck and just provides you with a general major turn push by, you know, giving you that wonderful plus 10,000 power, and by popping a unit on the front row of your opponent's rear guards. Yeah. And then for the other grade 3, I'm running 4 copies of Eradicator Sweep Command Dragon. Now, admittedly, most Japanese lists that I've seen run only 3 of these guys and 3 Bowing Swords, but that's because they're usually running 2 copies of Dragonic Descendant, and we kind of don't have them right now. I'll probably cut one of each and put in 2 copies of Dragonic um, Gauntlet Buster Dragon, as I imagine he'll be considerably cheaper than Descendant. Like, I'm thinking Descendant is going to be a $50 card, or maybe $40, but he is definitely not going to be cheap. That being said, now as far as what uh, Sweet Command Dragon does, first I'll talk about his uh, uh, a special skill. When you ride this thing, you put one of your Eradicator Rear Guards into the soul to retire a unit on your opponent's front row. Then his limit break is when you retire something through a card effect, you can retire another front row unit your opponent controls, gain 5,000 power, then draw a card from your deck. Or, I think it's actually in the other way around. You draw a card, then this unit gets plus 5,000. Yeah. But basically, the idea behind this deck is, Vowing Sword Dragon is going to retire a unit when you ride something on top of it. This guy lets you retire another unit when you retire something. So, there's your combo. Break Ride, Sweep Command Dragon, Overvowing Sword Dragon, and pop your opponent's two front row rear guards while giving yourself a 26,000 attacker, and you just drew a card off of that. And it's basically every time that you retire something that you get to Counter Blast 2, Soul Blast 2, then retire another card in the front row, then draw a card, if that's, if that's possible. So, more often than not, you're going to be just sniping off your opponent's front row rear guards, so they'll have to constantly replenish those, and this guy just keeps eating up the resources, and eventually you'll just... I make a big push that they can't really stop. And that's it for the grade 3s. 
Eight's kind of just standard in Arakami. I don't see myself ever running a less. I almost considered running a Thunderbreak Dragon in here, to be perfectly honest, because Thunderbreak Dragon actually pairs nicely with Fowling Sword. Thunderbreak will pop their back row rear guard, and Fowling Sword will pop their front row rear guard, thus you eliminate an entire column. That being said, though, in the future, I'm hoping that we'll get a card called Eradicator Electric Shaper Dragon, as he's just made to go with this guy. Oh, Electric Shaper Dragon, you're so good. That said, now we're getting to the grade 2s, and I've got four copies of Spark Rain Dragon. Three copies of Thunder Boom Dragon, and three copies of Venus Short Sword Eradicator, Cho. -O. Cho -O's ability is when you ride or call it, you put one other Eradicator rear guard into your soul to retire a front row rear guard. Now, why would you run this guy over, say, Dragonic Death Scythe, who happens to do basically the same thing except he can hit any rear guard, and it's a counter blast of two instead of putting something in, into the soul? Well. Because Sweet Command Dragon requires you to have a Soul Blast 2 card for his effect, you kind of need to put stuff into the soul to charge it up. Like He will put something into the soul when you ride it on it himself, and it's quite possible that by just going grade 0, grade 1, grade 2, and then finally grade 3, you will have enough ammo to perform his uh, on-ride skill and his uh, Soul Blast skill, but this guy kind of helps. and. It also saves you from using counter blasts in order to get this guy's effects off. In a standard Eradicator build, though, Death Sight's probably the better call, but I could still see this guy being used to, especially if you want to like try and make use of things like Rising Phoenix, which is something I've seen Japanese lists do well. They do as well, I mean. And that's it for the Grade 2s. For the Grade 1s, I'm running four perfect cards. These will be swapped out for the Eradicator version of Wyvern Guard Guild. Four copies of Steel Blooded Eradicator Shoki. This is a new card from BT11, just like Cho O. And his ability is every time you retire something of your opponent's, he gets plus 3000 power. And this is basically going to be a 10,000 or maybe even a 13,000 grade one that boosts. And that's kind of just what he's in there for. Admittedly, though, he actually can get pretty big. If you perform the break ride ability of these two together, he's going to be getting plus 6,000. And if you happen to, like, eh, that, yeah, that's kind of just really it. Like, at most it can be 13,000, but a 13,000 booster is nothing to sneeze at. This guy paired up with this guy, or this guy is some pretty good numbers. Of hell, just even with this guy, that's. Easily 21,000 power right there, not counting triggers. So, this guy I think will definitely be seeing play. I don't know if he'll continue to see play after later BTs, but it's still a very good grade one. And the reason why I'm running cards like him and Demolition Dragon, which is four copies over things like Red River Dragoon, who's admittedly a better booster, is their eradicator names and therefore their ammo for things like Cho O and Sweep Command Dragon. That being said, Four copies of Demolition Dragon. He's a 10,000 attacker. If you have an Eradicator, he doesn't give the 10,000 boost, obviously, but it's still a great one. You can just slam down into your front rear, rear guard circle and have him swing for 10,000 and, and then possibly move him to the back on the later turn and boost. Four copies of your generic 10,000 booster, and that's it for everything, really. After this, it's just triggers. Uh, four Eradicator criticals. For Malevolent Jin. Now, I could be running Zypher as another Eradicator, but Stand Triggers are not that great in this deck, and this guy actually has an ability that's sometimes overlooked, and that is you can put him into the soul to add 3000 power to something else. And the reason why we put him into the soul is, again, ammo for your Sweet Command Dragon Soul Blasts. Otherwise, yeah, that, he's just in his another crit. 8 crits is kind of doing okay here. Four heals and four draw. And that's really just kind of it for the deck itself. And there you have it, my preliminary build of Eradicators. It's 
been actually pretty fun to play, I'm not going to lie. Like, I didn't think it was going to be as awesome to play around with, just because, well, I was like, oh, this isn't going to be as good as it could be. But it's actually just, it's really fun playing around with what is probably considered to be a bad version of Eradicators. At least once we get Descendant and Buster, but I'm pretty sure that's just obvious. But, yeah, I'm, legit I'm legitimately enjoying playing around with this. It's something different from my usual Narukami. I mean, Vermilion is still one of my favorite cards ever printed, but I definitely do like how what this thing does. And if I'm really enjoying this version of Eradicators, I can only imagine how much fun I'm going to have playing Descendant, even though I know a lot of people are not going to be happy to see the deck popping up everywhere, but that's going to be the case. Like, yeah. Descendant and Gauntlet Buster Dragon are going to be the Dragon Rulers of Cartwright Vanguard, where all the best players are probably going to be running that deck, and if they're not running it, they're probably going to be something uh, playing something that's on par with it, which would be, I believe, Liberator Alfred and Dauntless Dote. And then BT-13 will come out and blow everything out of the water. Like, I can only imagine how well BT-13 will do here if it did as well as it did. No, not BT-13. BT-12. I keep getting those two mixed up. No, Bla Binding Force of Black Rings is BT-12. And... That apparently is one of the best selling sets that Vanguard's ever had, and one of the reasons why Shadow Spectres failed so miserably in Japan. Aside from it also being like one of the worst printed sets since Star Strike, not Star Strike last, I mean, one of the worst printed sets since Stardust Overdrive. Yes, Konami somehow managed to make something worse than that, but that's neither here or there. Long story short, Eradicators, I'm enjoying them, and if you're looking to build something that will probably be budgety, this is definitely the way to go. And hopefully we will get Electric Shaper Dragon at some point because this card with Electric Shaper Dragon will knock out not one, not two, not three, but four rear guards in one turn, giving you quite the powerful field. That being said, thank you guys for watching, and until next time, this is Blue Star 899 jacking out.